right, um, quickly as I can, I'll go through these questions. I've got one question that we've done in class, and I'll go through um, the process of putting this question together and how to answer all these parts of it. I'll also look at the this question here, um, where we're looking at um, predicting the strongest, or looking at and finding out the strongest oxidant and the strongest reductant, and look at a couple of these questions here. How do I know that this is reacting as, as an oxidant? And look at also um, looking at doing this question here, which is a bit more involved and um, writing half equations and a full equation for these, this oxidation reaction. But first of all, um, the most important one at the moment is using finding out a galvanic cell question and drawing a galvanic cell and labelling all the different parts for this galvanic cell. So, first of all, let's read the question together and we'll look at the most important part. A galvanic cell is made from potassium nitrate. I'm going to write down my formula for potassium nitrate, which is KNO3, and as the salt bridge. One half cell contains a platinum electrode in a solution of hydrochloric acid. The other contains an iron electrode in a solution of iron sulfate. And the two cells are connected and the voltage was recorded. What we want to do is draw this galvanic cell and on it label all this stuff. So that when I'm drawing a galvanic cell or whenever I have a galvanic cell question at all, I like to go through the following steps. And the first step is draw it. Okay, it seems like a, um, a one-step process, just draw it. But what by draw it, what I mean is just draw the basic outline of it. So I want to draw my two beakers here, connected with the salt bridge, which is potassium nitrate. Okay, and then I have my solution, I have my electrodes, I have my voltmeter in the middle there, and I have my electrode here as well, into my solution. So this is what I mean by draw it. Just draw the basic outline. Okay? Probably didn't even need to write potassium nitrate there as a salt bridge. I could have just left it like that. But this is my drawing of it. The second step is to um, lay... Sorry. Um, what have I got? What I got? It's a great, um, great sublime song, actually, what I got. But what do I have in this... Um, in each beaker? The first beaker... Well, first of all... Salt bridge, potassium nitrate, got that already. One half cell contains a platinum electrode, which is PT, okay, for platinum, in a solution of hydrochloric acid. In solution, hydrochloric acid will dissociate and it will form hydrogen ions and chlorine ions, chloride ions, I should say, okay. Being a solution, it means I also have water in there as well. So I'll put in my platinum, my hydrogen ions, my chloride ions, and my water in this beaker. My second beaker contains an iron electrode, which is Fe. Then I have an iron sulfate. Iron sulfate, what I should have put there is iron 2 sulfate because that's what the actual it is. So I have Fe2 plus and SO4 2 negative. And I also have H2O in that beaker as well because it's a solution. Whenever you have solution, chuck in water there as well because it's very, very important. Um, not so much in galvanic cells, but when you get into year 12, when it's electrolysis, it becomes very important anyway. So here's what I have, okay? Now I've drawn and I've labelled what I have. What I need to look at now is half equations and find the half equations that happen in each of these cells. What I do is I get my electrochemical series, which is in my data booklet. And I try and put a little asterisk next to all the stuff I have. I've got platinum. There's no platinum on this electrochemical series because it's in a, it's the unreactive. It's the most unreactive metal. It's what my ring's made out of, platinum. Okay? So it doesn't tarnish. It just stays nice and shiny and silver. It doesn't react at all. I've got um, hydrogen ions. So I'll put an asterisk next to my hydrogen ions there. I've got chloride ions. So I'll put an asterisk next to my chloride ions there. I've also got water. So I'll put an asterisk next to all the things that only have water on it. So here I've got water. There. Um, where else have I got water? I've got water up here as well. Oops, I'll put that there. Here, water. I also have water. I've got water and oxygen. I haven't got any oxygen in this, so I won't use that one. 
I've got water down here. And that's about it. So I've asterisked all the stuff that I have in this cell. I'm going to asterisk all the things I have in this cell now as well. So I have Fe2+, plus, Fe solid. Sulfate's not on here because, well, mostly negative um, ions, if they're um, complex ions, they're not going to be on there at all. And then I have my water, which I've already highlighted. Now, I'm going to look for what reaction is going to happen. So what I choose is the highest thing on the left. Because this is my going up, this is going down. So I want to choose the highest thing on my left-hand side, which is this reaction here. So my thing that's going to react that's the highest on this is my H+. What's the lowest on this side is my Fe solid. So these two things are going to form my reactants and they're going to form my half equations. So my half equation for the first one, the higher up it is, the more likely it's going to go forward. The lower it is, the more likely it's going to go down on this side. So my first reaction, where my H plus is, it's going to be 2 H plus, sorry, plus 2 electrons negative going to hydrogen. I should put in states there, so I'll put the states in as well. Aqueous and gas. Okay. In this beaker, the reaction I'm going to have is going to be iron, solid, going to iron 2 plus, aqueous, plus 2 electrons negative. Because my the lower one, it goes backwards. It has the back reaction happening. Okay, So you can see how this iron goes to the 2 electrons here and my 2 plus ions there. So this is my reaction. Now I have this. Only now, and only now, I can label it. So my fourth thing is label it. I can label it with everything now because I've got my half equations and know what reaction is going to happen here. So what I look for in labeling, I talk about red cat. Red cat happy. Red cat, as I said before, is it's a cafe and sale. It's where they sell coffee. So reduction happens at the cathode and it makes you happy so it's positive. So which one of these two is reduction? I think about the song I learned, and I know that oxidation, electrons on the right, so this must be oxidation here, because my electrons are on the right hand side. This means it's not the cathode, it means it's the anode, and it means it's negative. So this is the negative electrode, it's where the anode is, and it's where oxidation happens. Okay, that means that this one is the positive electrode, it's the cathode, and it's where, um, what's it called, reduction happens. Alright, that's what I've got here. Now what I want to look at is the flow, where the flow of the electrons are, the direction of electron flow. Electrons always flow from the cathode, sorry, from the anode towards the cathode. So my electrons flow this way because it goes, electrons are negative, they flow towards the positive terminal. Okay, and you can see here that electrons are leaving this side, so Fe is giving away these electrons, and the hydrogen here is accepting those electrons in this half equation. So you can see that there as well. Moving on from this, um, we've got where is the nitrate ion in the salt bridge going to go? Well, electrons, negative charge is leaving the anode. So the nitrate's there to replenish that charge. So the NO3 negative is going to replenish the negative charge lost at the anode. Okay? So the nitrate ion is going to go towards the anode there. Hopefully that makes sense. Next up, um, we've got the voltage obtained. How do we find the voltage? We go back to our electrochemical series and we look at the potential difference in these two um, reactions. This potential difference is zero and this one is negative 0.44. So the overall voltage between these two is 0 0.44 volts. Okay? You look at the difference between these two numbers and you get 0.44 volts. 
So this, um, the voltage obtained from the cell is 0 0.44 volts. Okay, and that will tell you what the voltage is. The one thing I haven't done with this equation, with this reaction, is find the overall equation for this um, galvanic cell. To do that, we need to look at our half equations and add these two half equations together. Okay, we have the same number of electrons here and here. So it's just a matter of adding the two parts to it. So if I put my arrow here, I'll add in 2H plus plus Fe solid. This should be aqueous. Remember states. Always remember your states. Goes to Fe aqueous plus H2 gas. So that's my overall equation because my electrons were the same. If my electrons are not the same, you need to multiply your half equation to make them the same as well. So if this one was 4 and this one was 2, I would have to multiply this whole equation by 2 to make that 4 before I added them together. And hopefully that kind of rings bells from what we've done beforehand as well. That is all about galvanic cells. And it's, it's how you find out um, direction of flow. It's how you find out what's the cathode and the anode, what the positive and negative is. Um, each question might not ask you for all this information, but it's very, very easy to find that information very, very quickly if you just do a simple little diagram like this. It's only ever going to take you about probably two minutes to draw it, okay? So hopefully that doesn't, um, isn't too bad. This podcast, this video has taken me about 11 minutes because I've explained every single part to you. But um, if you're just doing this by yourself um, in an exam, a quick little diagram like this will take you about two minutes and it's well worth it, even for a multiple choice question. Something like this is going to be really worth your while actually having a crack at and doing it that way. So um, that's galvanic cells. And I'll make another video um, for the rest of these questions, which is more about just general redox stuff. So um, I'll do that in another video.